It has specific predictions that were made hundreds of years in advance that were literally fulfilled against all mathematical odds. Well, now that we're on the topic of prophecy fulfillment, why don't we look at a prophecy Jesus made that actually failed? There are several passages where Jesus predicts when his second coming would occur. At one point, Jesus tells his disciples that some of them would still be alive when he returned. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus' disciples ask him explicitly, What will be the sign of your coming? How can we know when you're about to come back? Jesus predicts all the signs of the tribulation, earthquakes, destruction of the temple, and then he says something interesting. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. And when Jesus was sending out his disciples to preach the good news to the cities of Israel, he told them that before they had finished preaching to every city of Israel, he would return. When they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. When the high priest was interrogating Jesus, Jesus told the high priest, you will see me coming in the clouds. Jesus tells us in four different locations of the gospel accounts that he would return within the lifetime of his listeners before the current generation passed away and before his disciples had the chance to preach the good news to all the cities of Israel. Jesus made the prediction that he would return within, say, 50 or 60 years, certainly by the end of the first century, because after that, everyone in his listening audience would have been dead. Jesus did not return within the time frame he gave, and Christians have been waiting for him ever since. And it contains credible and well-documented miracles that confirm its message. Credible and well-documented miracles? Credible and well-documented miracles. I can't believe what I'm hearing. The miracles are, by definition, incredible. They're unbelievable. If they were credible, everyone would believe them. Since when is a man walking on water, turning water into wine, feeding 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, and raising people from the dead credible? And as for well-documented, the only place they're documented is in the four Gospels. Luke and Matthew both copy from the Gospel of Mark verbatim, so that rather eliminates those two from being an independent witness. The same could be said for the Gospel of John. The only independent witness of the miracles is the Gospel of Mark because it was the first Gospel written. The miracles are incredible and poorly documented since even in the four Gospels, the details of the miracles are often contradictory. The Gospels, which describe the life, teachings, miracles, death, and resurrection of Jesus, reflect eyewitness testimony and bear the unmistakable earmarks of accuracy. Matthew copies Mark verbatim to a large degree, and Luke copies both Matthew and Mark verbatim. So, this is not the earmark of an eyewitness account. It is the earmark of literary copying in order to improve the previous story. As for the unmistakable earmarks of accuracy, here's a few examples of accuracy for you. Matthew tells us that Joseph's father was Jacob, but Luke tells us that Joseph's father was Heli. Matthew says that Jesus was born during the reign of Herod, but Luke says that Jesus was born during the first census in Israel, which happened about ten years after Herod's death. The triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem riding a donkey is depicted in Mark, Luke, and John, and Matthew. But Matthew tells us Jesus was riding two donkeys at the same time, and here's the reason why. Matthew misread Zechariah 9 verse 9, which reads in part, mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This error by Matthew is because he was using the Septuagint translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, and the Septuagint was translated with the word and, when it should have been translated with the word even. 
and so due to this blunder, Matthew creates the absurd image of Jesus straddling two donkeys in order to fulfill the mistranslated Septuagint version of Zechariah 9 verse 9. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Last Supper takes place on the first day of Passover, but in John's Gospel, it takes place a day earlier, and Jesus is crucified on the first day of Passover. Matthew claims that the women were watching Jesus' crucifixion from far away. John tells us that the women were right at the foot of the cross, talking to Jesus. John tells us that Jesus carried his own cross on the way to be crucified. But Luke tells us that a man named Simon carried Jesus' cross. Luke tells us that only one of the criminals crucified with Jesus reviled him. But Matthew explicitly says that both criminals reviled Jesus. I could literally go on this way for the next several days without sleeping. So much for the earmarks of accuracy.